Hi, everyone else. Hi, Rooney. Hi, Sparkle. Hi. <laughs> how is everyone? Hi, how are you? Good. I'm good. I'm great. Who do we have? Is that Gloria on the phone? Yeah. Hi. Steve. Hi. How are you? Very well. How Hi. are you? I'm good. Excellent. Thank you for asking. And Who else? How are you? Great. Excellent. Excellent. I ordered, I ordered <laughs> You're the bracelet. Sorry? I ordered the bracelet. Oh, great. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. I'm in gratitude as much as I can remember after that last session we had. <laughs> every, time I, every time I complain, I look at my bracelet. <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> Is it a big rubber band? So when you think about it, you can snap it. <laughs> <off your wrist. laughs> Negative reinforcement. <laughs> or positive reinforcement. Yeah. I'd like to kick off the reading. I can start. Thanks, Cheryl. I'm supposed to be working, but I've got my phone turned down to me. Uh, <laughs> so if I, have, if I have to run, and then I'll have to bow out and let somebody take over for me. Okay. I'll get started anyway. So we're on chapter nine, right? How to use the will? Yep. Okay. To set about getting rich in a scientific way, you do not try to apply your willpower to anything outside of yourself. You have no right to do so anyway. It is wrong to apply your will to other men and women in order to get them to do what you wish done. It is as flagrantly wrong to coerce people by mental power as it is to coerce them by physical power. If compelling people by physical force to do things for you reduces them to slavery, compelling them by mental accomplishes exactly the same thing. The only difference is in the methods. If taking things from people by physical force is robbery, then taking things by mental force is also robbery. In principle, there is no difference. You have no right to use your willpower upon another person, even for his own good, because you do not know what it is for his good. The science of getting rich does not require you to apply power or force to any other person in any way whatsoever. There is not the slightest necessity for doing so. Indeed, any attempt to use your will upon others will only tend to defeat your purpose. You do not need to apply your will to things for them to come to you. That would simply be trying to coerce God and would be foolish and useless as well as irreverent. You do not have to compel God to give you good things any more than you have to use your willpower to make the sunrise. You do not have to use your willpower to conquer an unfriendly deity or to make stubborn and rebellious forces to do your bidding. The thinking substance is friendly to you and is more anxious to give you what you want than you are to get it. To get rich, you need only to use your willpower upon yourself. When you know what to think and do, you must use your will to compel yourself to think and do the right things. That is the legitimate use of the will in getting what you want, to use it in holding yourself to the right course. Use your will to keep yourself thinking and acting in the certain way. Do not try to project your will or your thoughts or your mind out into space to act on things or people. Keep your mind at home. It can accomplish more there than anywhere else. Use your mind to form a mental image of what you want and to hold that vision with faith and purpose. Use your will to keep your mind working the right way. The more steady and continuous your faith and purpose, the more rapidly you will get rich because you will, only, you will make only positive impressions upon formless substance. You will not neutralize or offset them by negative impressions. The formless substance receives a picture of your desires and allows this picture to penetrate to great distances, perhaps throughout the entire universe. As this impression spreads, all things are set moving toward its realization. Every living thing, every inanimate thing, and the things yet uncreated are stirred towards bringing into being that which you want. All force begins to be exerted in that direction. 
all things begin to move toward you. The universal mind is influenced toward doing these things necessary to, to fulfilling your desires, and it works for you unconsciously. But you can check all this by starting a negative impression in the formless substance. Doubt or disbelief is as certain to start a movement away from you as faith and purpose are to start one toward you. By not understanding this, most people fail when they try to make use of the mental science to get rich. Every hour and moment you spend in giving heed to doubts and fears, every hour you spend in worry, every hour in which your soul is possessed by disbelief sets a current away from you through the whole domain of the intelligent substance. All the promises are unto them that believe and unto them only. Notice how Jesus was upon, insistent upon this point of belief. Now you know the reason why. Would someone like to take over? Yeah, this is Tim. I'd be happy to read. Uh, I'm reading from a paperback book, so just uh, interrupt me if uh, I'm missing any sections. Since belief is all important, it behooves you to guard your thoughts, and as your beliefs will be shaped to a very great extent by the things you observe and think about, it is important that you focus your attention. Here the will comes into use, because by means of your will you determine the objects of your attention. If you want to become rich, you must not make a study of poverty. Things are not brought into being by thinking about their opposites. Health is never to be attained by studying disease and thinking about disease. Righteousness is not to be promoted by studying sin and thinking about sin. And no one ever got rich by studying poverty and thinking about poverty. Medicine, as a science of disease, has increased disease. Religion, as a science of sin, has promoted sin, and economics as a study of poverty will fill the world with wretchedness and want. Do not talk about poverty. Do not investigate it or concern yourself with it. Never mind what its causes are. You have nothing to do with them. What concerns you is the cure. Do not spend your time in charitable work or charity movements. All charity only tends to perpetuate the wretchedness it aims to eradicate. I do not say that you should not I do not say that you should be hard hearted or unkind and refuse to hear the cry of need, but you must not try to eradicate poverty in any of the conventional ways. Put poverty behind you, put all that it pertains to it behind you, and make good, quote unquote. You cannot hold the mental image which is necessary to make you rich if you fill your mind with pictures of poverty. Do not read books or papers which give accounts of the wretchedness of the tenement dwellers or of the horrors of child labor. Do not read anything which fills your mind with gloomy images of want and suffering. You cannot help the poor in the least by knowing about these things. The widespread knowledge of the circumstances of the poor does not tend at all to do away with poverty. I'll pass. Would anybody like to read? I'll have a turn if no one else is going to jump in. Um, <clears throat> what tends to do away with poverty is not the getting of pictures of poverty into your mind, but getting pictures of wealth into the mind of the poor. The poor. You're not deserting the poor in their misery when you refuse to allow your mind to be filled with pictures of that misery. Poverty can be done away with, not by increasing the number of well-to-do people who think about poverty, but by increasing the number of poor people who succeed in getting rich through the ex exercise of faith and purpose. The poor do not need charity, they need inspiration. Charity only sends them a loaf of bread to keep them alive in their wretchedness or gives them an old entertainment to make them forget for an hour or two. But inspiration will cause them to rise out of their misery. If you want to help the poor, demonstrate to them that they can become rich. Prove it by getting rich yourself. Get rich. This is the best way that you can help the poor. 
the only way which poverty will ever be banished from this world is by getting a large and constantly increasing number of people to practice the teachings of this book. People must be taught to become rich by creation, not by competition. Every person who becomes rich by competition kicks down the ladder by which he or she rises and keeps others down. But the person who gets rich by creation opens a way for thousands to follow and inspires them to do so. You're not showing hardness of heart or an unfeeling disposition when you refuse to pity poverty or to think or talk about it or to listen to those who do talk about it. Use your willpower to keep your mind off the subject of poverty and keep your mind fixed with faith and purpose on the vision of what you want. Question one, explain in your own language why you have no right to apply your will to other people. Because we may think we know what's best for them, but we don't really. And it's like, like robbery. Yeah, so if we wouldn't do it physically, we shouldn't do it. I'm going to unmute everyone, just in case they're not sure how. <laughs> yeah, diminishing others and you do not know what it is for their highest good. As much as we would like to tell them, like we don't know what their highest good is because we can't figure out what their thoughts are. And they might be attracting something that we don't even see and know, so that would be a, a diminishing uh, spirit to, to do this, I think. To apply, to apply the power over other people. It's a form of control, isn't it? And, you know, it's like forcing the grass to grow, forcing plants to blossom. We cannot do that because we don't know what the thinking substance is doing. What do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> and, you know, I think applying the will to yourself is the best way to get what you want because you attract what you are. So, yeah. right. And it tends to be, as a general rule, ineffective. We, we can only be effective 100% of the time by using our will to say, I'm going to think a better feeling thought or I'm going to think a more positive thought or I'm going to think an abundant thought. I'm not going to think about what I don't want or what the world does not need, but I'm going to frame it in positivity and inclusion and abundance. If I use my will to choose to direct my thoughts, I can always choose to direct my thoughts. I have a 100% opportunity to do that. If I'm trying to influence somebody else's thoughts wishes, desires, behavior, the majority of the time, it's ineffective. So it's a waste of energy and it frequently leads to frustration and confusion and poor relationships. Yeah, because exact, exactly, it leads to poor relationships. And how many times, have you know, how many people do you know that are always trying to get their way, right? And so that's what they're doing there. They're trying to impose their will on you. Mm. Yeah, and if you don't like the behavior of another person, say your spouse or another family member, if you look at them in the best light possible, only allow yourself to see their good qualities after a period of time, that's what you'll see. It really is true when you, when you um, even a, a class teacher, I do this with my kids, just only see the good qualities in the teacher. Don't allow yourself to think about you know their teaching style that you don't like or whatever it is only allow yourself to see their good qualities and think good thoughts about them and eventually that's all you'll see in that person and you won't feel the need to change their behavior anymore oh. but if i can't work on changing their behavior then i have the responsibility of working on changing mine darn yeah. <laughs> That's an ongoing process, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We're all just works in progress. Yeah. We'll never be cooked. <clears throat> uh, question two, can you compel the, 
the things you want <clears throat> to come to you by exerting willpower. If not, why not? Um, well, I think you're trying to hold yourself up, aren't you? Wouldn't that be um, that's a manipulation? That would be foolish. Hmm. We don't have the power uh, to even make the sunrise, so how can we do that? Okay. Hmm. Yeah. <coughs> so, okay. Okay. How yeah, are things? Like, yeah. I was just going to ask, you know, how do things come to us by us being of the same resonance as them? So we can't make the car come to us by focusing on the car and trying to will it to us. We have yeah. to vibrate in the frequency of someone who yeah. owns that car. Okay. Like, like Rooney's yellow uh, Ford. Yeah. <laughs> but well, you can't, you know what? What about the sunset? I mean, you can't fly over to that. It's all in timing, isn't it? Yeah, so we can't manipulate the laws of nature, can we? No, we yeah. don't have the power to make the sun rise or set or anything else. So, oh, this is such a good. Chapter. Hold it on. Wow. Hey. The car is mine. The car is mine. I already got a car. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yay. I Who's love that? I love that part where it says that you, you, about you cannot you can't uh, manipulate or try to coerce God either. And I thought, yeah, that, that's right. That was really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty foolish, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's like making the sunrise. How can you do that? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. That's okay. Plenty of us have tried. <laughs> we weren't able to change God's will. It's, it might have fought but, prayer, but you can't make the sunrise. <laughs> You know, it's an interesting form of prayer when you try to make uh, demands upon God, but it, it's still prayer nonetheless. You know, I, I, my God's fairly large, so I think there's been some experience throughout the centuries ever since man could first think, or a woman, I think, mm -hmm. that sometimes thrown down a gauntlet said, okay, God, do this or else. <laughs> yeah. And like the next paragraph, I think is just is so fantastic, though. It just it's so it gives you such security and hope. The thinking substance is friendly to you, and it's more anxious to give you what you want than you are to get it. That is just that's just so fantastic. That that yeah, thing. right. Boy, that's something I have to repeat over and over. Yeah, it's so positive. The thinking substance. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a paragraph in the previous chapter that was outstanding about that. And so it's up to us to send a clear message. Because I, thinking substance is more than willing and wants to give it to us more than we do. So if we can get our message clear through working on ourselves, okay. that's the key. So what is yeah. what, one question? One question, is it, so if, since you cannot do all those things, what can you do then? Because you are not allowed to, to work on the willpower of other people. You are not allowed to uh, make the sun rise. <laughs> so what, what can you do then? That what is, go ahead. Yeah, so, so what, what are you do? what can you do then? What are you allowed to do? And that's precisely the next question, number three. <laughs> it's fairly narrow. <laughs> yeah, so how we impress on the form of substance. You use your will to making positive impressions in a certain way. Well, bring positive results. You will not neutralize or offset negative impressions. So line 44 says, use your mind to form a mental picture of what you want and hold that vision with yeah. faith and purpose. Use your will to Great keep your mind. mind working the right way. 
Right way. Wow. How do you do that? Practice. Tell me, tell me how you do that. How, what is your way every day when you get up in the morning and um, pour your tea or your coffee? And what's, what's the process that really works? Does anybody figure that I do, out? I do, I do it by imagination. So imagination. Imagination, belief, desire, I do it with that. So just live in the house, drive the Porsche, just yeah. live in it, live yeah. in it. The, the, only yeah. thing, the only thing I have is, you know, you want, where, where, what, no, you, do, you desire to, to live in that house and with that, drive that car. Right. But, but since you cannot put your willpower on the people around you, I mean, what do you do with your love, with your wife? You see, so do you, what, that's basically what, what do you do with your wife, with your husband? Suppose you have like that, that Porsche and that, uh, that uh, villa you, you want to live in and you put your thoughts that you are going there. All right. But, but you cannot put, you cannot bring anyone with you. Basically. Uh, I don't think that's what, quite what they're meaning. Uh, you can have your wife and your vision there with you because that's what you want. However, you can't force your will on your wife to do the dishes every night because you don't like doing dishes. Yeah, but if you, no, so if you, no, but, but, but listen, listen, Nicole, if you bring your wife to that villa, you see, I mean, you are, you are picturing your wife in that villa or your husband in that villa and your wife doesn't want that or your villa your your husband doesn't want that so yeah. what are you what are you doing then i mean so you are create basically you are you you can do two things you can create your ideal life without anybody in it or you can create your ideal life with somebody in it I, I would mm. suggest communication with your wife and come up with a mastermind vision together yeah. Yeah. Because it's not a happy life with no one in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I, I just, you know, I just picture, I just picture, uh, when I picture something, I picture like a healthy life, etc. And I also picture a healthy life with my, my wife, with a partner, with all, all those things in there. But, um, yeah, you have, you have, you have, you know, you, you, you have your desires and you have your, you, what you want, what you want, but it doesn't, uh, the willpower and somebody else, I mean, you, you can picture somebody happily in your dream life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You have to get there first and then you can invite her yeah. because she will want to be with you. So, you know what, everybody, uh, you know, I'm talking about the science of getting rich and yet if you don't see evidence, you know, materially, then uh, nobody really, because we're all kind of um, uh, inspired by the physical because, you know, what you see is what you get. So if you don't see it and you're always talking about it, then that doesn't bring attention to somebody else. It's like I'm telling you, well, there's going to be a beautiful sunset tonight, but you're waiting and waiting and it's not there. It's, it's a cloudy night and you don't see anything. So. And if that keeps happening, then people get, I think, discouraged and say, well, <laughs> you're on another planet. Like, let me know when you get what you want. I'll join you. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So, so I think that's it. Um, I, have a, I have something that I'm running by and... Um, I'm asking your permission if I can share this. Uh, if that's okay. Maybe at the um, end, Gloria. Maybe at the end. Okay, Gloria. at the end. That's all right. Okay, great. Okay. Has anyone had the uh, experience of focusing on something negative and have that manifest? <laughs> yes, I've had yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Anyone want to give us an example? Because I think that negative things are so much easier to focus on, aren't they? Because they get under your skin and you're constantly thinking about them. 
I have an example. I have an example of a person, negative person, coming into my life, and then I just focus on the negativity. See, so because it's so negative, and then I I focus on the negativity, and then suddenly, you know, after a couple of uh, weeks, I, I I feel like I cannot get out of the bed anymore. I mean, how? What is this? Yeah. No dream, so nothing. So what happened is that this person. Um, gave me the negative vibration, you see? So it, it gave me like something like, you know, everything is happening around me. It's the fault of the other people. So even if you put this person, this person is not my family, by the way, but even I, I realized, even if you put, <laughs> even if you put that, even if you put this person is in paradise, you know, if, if you put this person in paradise and in, in heaven, the person will will definitely be sad about it. So it's it's heaven's fault. You see, it's heaven's fault yeah. that I got this problem. So when you are uh, really when you are close to somebody who is negative, you really really become negative. So so when you focus on negative, and then your mind is negative all the time, and it is yeah. basically dragging your 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 power you see it's 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 bringing your vibration down it's making you happy it's so i've seen that so now what i do is i just i just uh when i see the, this kind of persons i just uh turn to the right or turn to the left yeah. so what right. could what Don't could you do Hmm? What could you do to get the opposite result then? Yeah, then, then I think. Question. I just imagined you guys and uh, you guys come into my life. So. Uh, ah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I think you're in your yellow car. That's what you're imagining. Yes. And everybody's riding with you. you see. <laughs> yes. this, this is Gloria. I yes. see you. I think you need to put a headshot in that 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 photo. Of you there. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> make them make it into wallpaper or something. <laughs> I will do it. I will do it. No, I think I think if you if you sur just quick if you surround uh, Nicole if you surround yourself with all the positive things or with your dreams, so you put it, you put it in your in your iPhone and your phone in your in your business. If you surround yourself with the positive things you want. And the people and happy, etc. I think mm -hmm. every day you will just see those things, and you will uh, you will start with the right vibration. You see, so in the morning you can choose, you can set your willpower to choose what the day is going to be. It's going to be a wonderful day or not? Are there wonderful mm -hmm. people coming into my life or not? So you can choose that. You can choose that by setting your vibration. I think that's what I wanted to contribute. It's a good example because you can see like you can see how you're capable of manifesting. Even if it was something negative, you were still capable of manifesting mm -hmm. your attitude um, through association with that person and taking on their vibration. So obviously, we can do it the opposite way purposefully. There's other tools. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm just wondering if anybody watches the news. No. Certain negativity. <laughs> That's negativity. No, I'm just wondering, you know, like business, you know, people are, when you go downtown, people are talking about the news all the time. And my vision was, is I was afraid to go on the U band in Munich here because um, they were going to, they caught them from almost blowing up the train station. And I kept thinking about this. I don't want to go on the, the U-Bahn. And then sure enough, you know, in Berlin, they blow up the U-Bahn and all these people are killed. So this is the kind of thing that I feel a little bit uh, nervous about to even take that. So I'm trying to take other routes on the trams and stuff to go downtown, but that's not a very good idea. I don't know. I, I, I'm just kind of a little bit confused about all this. I'll be 
So how, how do I eliminate that? I, I don't watch the news, but I hear it from other people. If I'm going into a store, oh, did you hear about this and this and this? And it's just everywhere here. So we're bombarded by, by all of that. So that, that's just in a negative spiral downstream. I, 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 and we can do certain things when we're exposed to that. Uh, the reality of it is, is there's more good people in the world than there are hateful people yeah. that create anarchy. Uh, I, I have friends that uh, have uh, the faith in the Eastern traditions, and I, I frequently ask them about uh, their practices of faith and their beliefs, and it's clear that the terrorists and the anarchists are, are not of that faith. Whatever they yeah. ascribe themselves or describe themselves to be, it's crystal clear. So when I hear about those events, I use my will to immediately change my thoughts and think yeah. about positive experiences that I have interacting with these people and just an incredible yeah. amount of, of love and kindness and generosity that I frequently get to witness them participating in. And oh, I can yeah. use my will to change my thoughts and just say that what is on the news is such a small minority of what happens on a day-to-day -day basis that the reality of it is is people are loving, kind, generous people overwhelmingly and try to focus on that. That question I, I, in your book, Tim, I think would be a good one as part of this. Uh, I think it was question four. Did we do number three, the oh. proper, or do you want to skip around? No, no, we don't have that question in your book, and I just thought it would be good on this topic here about controlling your thoughts. Well, question number three says, can you keep your mind thinking as you want it to think? If not, That's the what? One. Yep. hinders you. Uh, for myself, I have to consciously choose what my thoughts are. That's the only way I can use my will 100% of the time is to consciously choose what my thoughts are. What gets in the way are emotions and feelings. And uh, actually, I just went through a great NLP exercise yesterday. Uh, on a way to kind of get seated with that, uh, some mindfulness exercises relative to NLP. And, and it was quite beneficial, but I have to recognize and accept what is my emotion, my feeling, and, and let it come in me and pass through me that, yes, it's valid, I, I have children. If I'm concerned about my children's well-being relative to uh, violence in the world or handgun violence uh, in the streets of the United States where I live or there's all kinds of bad people, car accidents, all kinds of things that I can be fearful for the well-being of my children but oh. that's not a positive thought so I have to choose to think a better feeling thought and use my will to do that. Was that kind of what you were hinting at? Nicole? Yeah, because I think in this chapter yeah. it's really important to get the point that we really need to be controlling our thoughts. We all, like this question here, we to explain how positive and negative impressions are made. Well, we're making positive and negative impressions every moment. So that being able to control our thoughts is really important so that we're only making the positive impressions that we want to impress. Nicole, Nicole can I add something? Sure. I, I, Okay, what what I think what I think is uh, the thoughts I consider thoughts uh, as just passenger in your car or passengers in your life. You see, so you have a bus or you have a car, whatever you're driving. You are uh, behind the driver's seat, and the thoughts are just passengers. So you can just stop and let them go. You see. So the moment, yeah. the, mom, the moment you think that the thoughts are you, you know, the thoughts are you, the thoughts are basically they, they just come and they pass and they buy, they are just waves, they are passengers. Yeah. So when you, when you attach to the thoughts, then you have a problem. And who is attaching to the thoughts? The one attaching to the thoughts most of the time is the ego. You see, so we are two persons, we are two, we consist of two beings basically, the ego and, you know, the the all so when you are 
most of the time, if you have sad thoughts or, you know, father thoughts, etc., etc., and those are valid thoughts, of course, but you can choose to become a very uh, mm -hmm. a angry father. You can choose to play the role of angry father or, or angry mother or uh, sad father or sad mother. So, but when you, when you say like, you know, you want, you, 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 you have sad feelings, etc. You can consider them as thoughts and these thoughts are, you know, look, look at the thoughts and then these thoughts can go away. But when you say like, okay, you are the ego and you are the father, you are bad or you are, you are uh, mad or you are mad about the, the, those people killing mm -hmm. those people. Then what, what is happening is your ego is pulling all those negative thoughts and your ego is growing and when your ego grows, there is no light anymore. So the light part of you goes away and then you become really mad, mad, mad. You are your ego. So you are lost for the moment, you see? You are all your thoughts, negative thoughts. So that's why I think when the negative thoughts come, try to consider them, what, 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 why are they here? What do they mean, etc. But leave them because you have, you have an option. Don't, don't become your negative thoughts. Because the moment you become the negative thought, all those, you become an ego, your ego will play a game with you. The one driving the car is not you anymore, but it's your ego. And you are lost for a moment. I, you know what I really yeah. like about that analogy, Rooney, is I can picture myself driving the car and some kind of like a, a thought that I don't want like fear or something like that. And I can, I can picture myself opening the passenger door while I'm driving and shoving it out the door. <laughs> Don't ride with her. It feels so good. And that's perfect yeah. because, <laughs> you know, your subconscious mind works in pictures and metaphors. So having that illustration is the perfect thing to train your mind with. Awesome, I love yeah. that. Thank you. Good evening, guys. How are you doing? Hi, Christos. Yeah. And also, right. and also, hello, uh, hello, hello. hello. And Rooney. also, clouds, clouds, Rooney. What about clouds? You know, when you see clouds, those are thoughts, and they just keep passing. They're always changing. So that's a vision that I hold when I see a cloud. I think, oh, that's just a thought, and it just keeps moving. Yeah, there are there are, there are some there are some thoughts. They they keep changing chasing you you see they keep chasing you they come back come back and so, sometimes you have to just take a decision like okay you're done i know what you what, what where you are heading me you know if i give you full control i know where where you are heading me so yeah. i mean it's it, it is difficult but i i just wrote a poem that that that, that thoughts are just passengers in my life you see passengers sure. in my head that is correct. Um, Rooney, I'll, I'm, I'll be honest. When I look at thoughts, when I get an idea, a good friend of mine taught me this. And he said, a thought is like a car when you're sitting in a cafe. So you're sitting in a cafe, you're drinking your coffee, your tea, or whatever you want to drink. A thought is that car that goes by the window. You let it go past. The minute you grasp it, is that it's you giving it life so regardless of that thought and yes. they, this is when it comes to um hollywell hollywell puts it really well actually he says that no is it hollywell or is it napoleon hill i can't remember anymore the point is when you get a thought it's the conscious mind that decides and it's, we decide consciously whether we will allow that thought in us. Napoleon Hill, it's the one or not a suggestion. It's up to us whether we allow that thought to enter our subconscious mind or not. However, even though we have the ability to do that, the majority of the time, the majority of the people do not exercise that practice. Yes. So by allowing any thought, apart from the one that you want any form whatsoever and this is going back to the formless substance if you allow it 
any form whatsoever to enter the formless substance, you are giving it substance. So the best thing you can do with a thought is literally ignore it. Let it go past. Don't grasp it. Don't question it. If it's something you do not want, let it go. Because by not letting it go, you're giving it substance. You're giving it some form of a reality in your own present and future. So the, the idea is, uh, if I understand what you're trying to say, is you need to determine why you are, why that thought, the one that you don't want, is actually there. That is, that is one thing. By giving that thought a substance, that's something completely different. Because then you, we're going back to the want and don't want. It's like saying, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that. So you've got to go back to saying, right, this is what I do want. By giving that thought substance, the one that you don't want, the one that's going past, let it go past. It's, it's just like uh, the, the old phrase, you know, water under the bridge. Let it be exactly that. It's like when you drop those little paper boats onto a, on, into a river over a bridge and then it goes under a bridge and you just see it floating away. Make that the thought you don't want. The thought you do want is when you put that boat in the river and you think, ah, that, I actually want that one back. That's when you put the net inside and you catch it, you bring it back up and you say, yeah, that's the one that I want. Now that, that's the difference between allowing your thought and not allowing your thought. The thing with the ego, when I was, uh, it, this was the greatest impact for me when I read um, uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer's book, Wishes, My, uh, Wishes Fulfilled. He's, he speaks about the ego a lot and he explains it very, very clearly. And it's actually the, the one time and the only time when I learned and it's like a switch, turning on a, a light bulb to switch off the ego. Because for me it was a realization that your ego is everything in your past that you're holding on to because you believe or you don't want to let it go. For example, when I got out of the, of the army, I'd done I've got QTS, um, I'm, a, I'm a qualified science teacher. I've been training and I've been doing force protection and security. It was all of a sudden I realized I was still holding on to those things. And it was my ego holding on to them because I didn't want to let go of the fact that, hey, look at me, I've been to a university, aren't I smart, aren't I intelligent? Well, actually, no, you're not. You're an idiot. You're an idiot because you're holding on to it and you're stopping yourself from going forward because you're allowing that part of the ego to hold you back. It's like a thousand horses pulling you backwards with your ego rather than releasing him and just letting the single horse take you forward which builds up into a gallop and then at a speed that you can't hold on to. I mean, it's one of the most difficult concepts for a lot of people to let go of that ego because you've got to let go of everything you believe yourself to be. Now, this is where the, the thing about willpower comes into it. Sometimes you've got to develop willpower, sometimes you've got it, and sometimes things just happen. For me, it just happened. Willpower didn't play a part in it. What played a part in it was, well, actually, that's a lie. The part of the willpower that did play a part in it was my wish that I, I knew that I need to move, move forward and to do that I had to practice some form of willpower to allow the ego to let it go. In the same way you've got to use your willpower to allow that thought that you don't want to just float by. Just like the clouds, you know you see the cloud the floating cloud, by. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, it, let, let it go by. Don't even watch it. That's not the yeah. cloud. Let it go by. That, that's, that's got nothing to yeah. do with it. That's, a, that's something else. 
And then all of a sudden you yeah. see a cloud and you say, that's my cloud. And that's the one you want. And that's where you grasp it. Willpower is, is one of those things where it depends who you ask. If you go into the army, they'll say to you, willpower is discipline. You come out of that, you, you go to, it's like my cousin is a priest. Again, he will talk about discipline rather than willpower because they, they're very close to each other, but they're actually very different. And it's, it's very important to distinguish between one and the other. Discipline is that thing that you've got in within yourself that you don't do because of one reason or another. It becomes that habit. Your willpower is what causes that habit to happen. So by instilling your willpower, you create your new reality and the only way to create that new reality is to maintain that want on a constant basis and again it's something that we don't all have it some of us we have to work on it and that's fine i mean i had to work on it the problem, this, and I think really this is what it was one of your points, is the ego will not allow that will to hold on to a thought yeah. that says that's what I want, because your ego is saying, no, it's not, it's below you, or don't be silly, this is what you should be doing, because your ego is saying that's what you've had before, and this is what you're going to aim for, because if you release that, and you're no longer that person. Well, you've got to decide. Do you want to be that person? Do you want to move forward? Is the ego really that important? And the answer is no, it's not. And for me, that was the greatest lesson, is the thing about the ego. The thing about willpower is like I said, if you haven't got it, you develop it. And you develop it by constant use nothing at all in all of this stuff everything that we're doing all these ideas everything to do with thought cannot come to you without effort at all effort is something that it's got to be a key word in your language when it comes to this and willpower is what keeps it going good great thanks I missed welcome. you, Christos. <laughs> Thank you. I that was that really nice and clear. <laughs> I thought that adrenaline went through me again. <laughs> welcome, hon. Sorry, I haven't, I haven't been on. Oh, don't be sorry. And it is an effort. You know, you've got, you've got to be on guard 24-7, noticing when you are accidentally catching those clouds that you don't want and quickly kicking them out and getting your, yep. getting your thoughts straight back onto the things that you do want. Yep. Correct. Correct. I have a question for you. When you say, when you say quickly check out the thought, so do you acknowledge the thought and then just dismiss it and basically say, I'm not going to acknowledge this thought and then change the thought to something more positive? <coughs> How do, what would you say the process of going about kicking out the negative thought when you do catch yourself. I'd, I'd have two yeah. answers for that. One is if it's a thought that keeps coming up continually, I would probably address it and work out why so that you can actually get rid of it permanently. If it's just a random thought that's popped in, I'd just kick it out as quickly as possible without even acknowledging it. Give it as little screen time as possible. Can, can I say some, something uh, small? I think also with regards to what I think Tim or, and Christo said, eh? you can also see a thought as a vibration. So when the thought comes in with a negative vibration or, you know, very low vibration, you know, bad, <laughs> then you can choose to say like, okay, I just let you go. You know, I know what happens with, you, with me when I become you, that, that thought. You see, so the thought, it becomes very, you know, it's like small thought. <laughs> you can leave it, 
or you can just focus on it and when you focus on it like i think like resto said or or other person also said when you focus on it it will grow so imagine this negative vibration you focus on it you you go you convert it into emotion now it is in your body and it is all over your your mind and it's taking control and it's putting all those emotions so you are letting that happen and most of the people there are some yeah most i think i read a book and it's the power of the power of now and it's also about uh you know leaving the past and the present behind it's about eckhart tolle and when, yeah. when, when when basically when you when you focus on it you become it and it yeah. for me it attaches to your ego it attaches to your ego and your ego takes takes control you see but some of the people getting mad i mean if somebody gets mad most of the people in the book of uh, the power of now they are saying most of the people 99% of the people are just asleep they are they are their ego they if if you say something to them they are ready to hit you you see because the thoughts they are so full of those, those negative thoughts already so only one one little thing one little word you need to tell them or one little thought you need to to, to tell them that blows in your mind so i think the people you know committing all those cruel things for instance they are egos they are negative they are all negative vibration they are probably also fathers and mothers etc but they don't have the they don't look at the at the lovely mother or the lovely father anymore they are just like i'm the terrorist i'm the negative so that's why they could commit them so most a lot of people are still asleep and a lot of people you only need to do this and they will they will not consciously they don't have the willpower basically they 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 consciously they cannot choose if there is a negative thought they cannot choose to leave it by they they just explode in your in your in your face so mm -hmm. i think what, what we are trying to do is be, become more conscious and become more uh focused to the positive thoughts that's interesting the uh the hazard with a thought and and for myself i i i in my thinking I, I keep a distinct difference between thinking and thought and emotions and feelings for for me to understand them they're two totally different things that my will i can choose what my thinking is or what my thought is i cannot choose what my emotions or my feelings are directly only indirectly by changing my habits over time and if i resist a thought what i resist tends to persist or the other habit is if I have a persistent thought that I do not want to face, then I will find some distraction. I will find it with alcohol or chemical substances or eating or behavior or busyness or overwork. If there's an issue inside me that needs to be addressed, it will keep surfacing until I address it. It's, it I'm not speaking of a fleeting thought that just comes in for a moment or a fleeting short-term emotion or feeling that just flashes for a second. And it's really important for me not to resist the thoughts or the type of thinking that comes back because my subconscious only sees absolute values. It doesn't see positive thinking. It doesn't see negative thinking. It doesn't care. It only sees the actual value. So this, this chapter is talking about how should we think about poverty. We shouldn't think about poverty at all. We cannot think about eradication of poverty. We cannot think about reducing poverty without impressing on my subconscious poverty. It doesn't take the first part. It doesn't care about the adjective. It only cares about poverty. And that's why it's really important to choose my thoughts. So there's, there's various tools, particularly thoughts that I, I want to resist, that I, I have to work through some mindfulness exercise of, of acknowledging them and allowing my body to, to physically experience them or allow myself to visually uh, imagine uh, them and just be present with it before I, I let it go. Uh, much like Christoph was saying, that's just very short-term mindfulness type practice. 
but if I expect to get from here to there and it's a persistent repetitive thought, there's some steps I need to do in the middle. If I just try to say, oh, I'm not going to think about that, a lot of times it'll come back later or come out sideways or come back with more force and more negativity. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's that's absolutely perfect, Tim. Can I ask you something though? You said something about you're not able to change your emotions. Um, on on that point, when you've got something going through you and it's negative, I turn, I, I I've got to tell you this. Sorry, guys, I'm 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 flicking on something else at the moment. Tim, the way you were talking, you do realize that if anybody else heard us, they think we're going hippie hippie style, don't you? I'll be honest. I was when I said uh, Christoph, was, I, I, I can't change my feelings and my emotions directly. Right? Yes, you can. Instantaneously, I have a challenge doing that, but I can always change ah. my thinking. Right. Okay. Um, it actually works better the other way around. When you're able, you th you thoughts. It's something that Nicole was doing, um, what was it, last week, when you're concentrating on your emotions, emotional content. So I've been trying it for the past week. I'll be honest, I found it difficult because I got uh, a lot of distractions, especially at work. Um, at this moment in time, okay, they, let, me, let me put it on from a personal perspective. Um, I'm orthodox. We're going through the 40-day fast. I think we've got another 20 days to go or something like that. Now, what a lot of people misunderstand about a fast, regardless of what religion you are. Um, and if anybody is non-religious, I do apologize. This is just me speaking from my experience. Um, a fast is not just the food. The food is actually the simple part. The hardest part is actually the mental and the emotional, which is where you've got to maintain a, literally, a positive mental outlook on everything around you. You cannot say anything bad, you can't think anything bad. Um, if anything bad happens, then you just let it go and it's just the way it is. And you, you may not like it, but you've got to do it. Now, this time round is very difficult for me because I've become more aware of the way that I think. Whereas the last time that I did this, it was very easy because I didn't realize how I was thinking. So what I had to do was, and especially after Nicole mentioned it, I thought to myself, you know something, she, she has a point, Nicole has a point. So I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna try it out. And what I did was, Rather than concentrating on my thoughts, I concentrated on the feelings that my thoughts were bringing. So the minute I started thinking to myself, right, mate, you're being an idiot. Uh, you feel bad. I felt bad, so I thought, right, what's going to make me feel good? So okay. I thought about something that's going to make me feel good. Now, that's the way that you start... You, you start trying to alter your emotional state, your emotional content. Um, it's maintaining a positive emotional state rather than a negative emotional state. It is difficult. I do understand that because um, my background had a profound impact on my emotional state in the sense that I went for a couple of years without literally feeling anything. Um, and coming back to it was a difficult. Um, and I had to go through a process while I was still serving in a country that wasn't even mine. I was in Kenya for 11 months and that's where I started relearning humanity again. Um, and I'm, I'll be honest, I'm still learning. So what you're saying, Tim, about emotions, I do understand, buddy, it, it is difficult. It's, it's one of those things that for those of us that either haven't used it for a while or it's something that you never thought about before. 
getting into getting in touch with it and trying to reform it is difficult and again it's like you said it is willpower now I, what Wallace does is he specifies poverty because the book is about wealth it's about getting uh, cash in your pocket cash in the bank what Napoleon does Napoleon Hill he ex even at the beginning of the book he says that you can apply the rules to absolutely anything and in our case the willpower is not necessarily just for riches it is a willpower in being able to become a balanced human being because it's something that uh, this is what this is this stuff is about nowadays it's not just about wealth generation it's about, about being rich in all parts of your life and what i found when it comes to the emotional side is persistence and the willpower to continue with it even when <laughs> even when uh i can put it it's a little bit challenging <laughs> at best yeah but I, the rest of what you said tim is uh, is a, what i reflect on as well is exactly that the emotional state however is that's how i'm learning to control my thoughts i'm getting in touch when i'm thinking something i'm saying why and i feel it so rather than holding on to the thought i'm going to the emotional content of that thought and i'm altering that thought and you can do this with fear you can do it with i don't know maybe fear of spiders fear of I don't know, I've met a guy who's scared of flip-flops for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't understand it and I didn't even want to go into it. I just had to sort of say, okay, I've got to go and do my job now because I was too confused and too shocked that you can actually have a fear of flip-flops. But it's, again, it's that willpower in being able to hold it and saying, fine that's the thought what's the emotional content and i think that's another way and um, some people will be able to hold and um, through willpower and um, the state of you know standing on a bridge and allowing that little boat to float away or sitting in the car in the mental cafe of your mind and watching the cars go by even if it's a Ferrari and you're thinking, oh, I, you know, I don't like Ferraris, by the way. But, you know, for those that do like their Ferrari, you just let it go by because that's not your ideal thing. You've got your ideal will come through an emotional content. And by maintaining it, it's something that drives you forward. Um, I've seen that in my partner. She has she does decoupage and she absolutely loves it and it's the emotional content of that that drives her forward it's not the thought she doesn't even think when it comes to it she just feels she'll get up in the morning or after she comes back from work she's absolutely she's knackered she's tired but the minute she feels that she wants to do it she does it she doesn't think she feels it and uh, I've seen this many, many a time. I never understood one line that Bruce Lee said in Enter the Dragon. And I mean, the first time I saw it was, I was seven years old. Wow, that, that's a long time ago. Anyway, uh, and he said, he tells his student, do it with me with emotional content. And it's only recently that I've been able to understand exactly what he meant. And emotional content, because previous to that, I said to him, not anger emotional content and that's when i begin to realize what it means is that anything you feel needs for us it needs to be a positive emotional content and everybody uh, and and it's one of those 
things that everybody talks about in every book that you could ever read. The highest emotional content you can have is love. Now, the weird thing is, is well, how do you make, you know, how can you love absolutely everything? Well, that's easy, you just do. I know it sounds easy, but it's not easy. But the easiest thing is you just love everything. It's just an emotional content. It's an emotional state. Mm -hmm. it, it's a weird thing to do at the beginning. But when you begin to accept things for what they are, it becomes easier. And it's the same with the thought. When you accept your thought for what it is and you either let it go or you question it and you say, right, you keep coming back, why? And Tim, you, you repeated exactly what Nicole said and you're right, it is. If it keeps coming back, just like Nicole said, you have to question it. There's a reason it keeps coming back. Now, the thing is, is that sometimes it's something that's embedded. It's something that's quite deep down and you don't even realize it. And that's happened to me recently. Um, and you've got a question, you know, what is it? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Why am I not doing this? Why am I omitting doing something? Why am I stopping myself? Um, and again, it, those thoughts, even though they're negative, they're necessities to question to be able to move forward. If it's a fleeting thought, like Nicole said, like you said, Tim, you let it go. It's, it's a floating cloud, just let it go. It, it won't make a difference. And if you, you find it difficult, ask yourself the question, will it make a difference in five minutes from now? And the answer, 99.9% .9 of the time, is gonna come back, no. So you just let go and you maintain your emotional state to a positive emotional state without allowing anybody else to uh, enforce their willpower on it one way or another. I'm done again. Sorry. No. I like the way you brought up about love because we've been doing something similar with, with gratitude. You just make the choice within your mind that I'm going to feel love 100% of the time or I'm going to be grateful 100% of the time. When something yeah. comes into your existence that does not make you feel gratitude or love, you keep finding another thought about it until you do resonate in that way with it. So it's a good way to start training your mind to, you know, you just make that decision. I'm gonna feel this way about everything and then when you come into contact with things, you keep changing your thoughts about that particular thing until you bring it up to the point where, yep, yeah, okay. I can feel love about that or I can feel grateful about something to do with that. Yeah. It's a choice. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Is that you were talking about the uh, wearing of a band? That's what you were referring to, wasn't it? Yeah. So reminding ourselves that when we do come into contact with someone or a situation that we're not very happy about, we're getting negative thoughts about will notice the band because we're not used to wearing it and I'm swapping wrists as I get too used to wearing it and just remembering to know, okay, what are some thoughts here? Some better feeling thoughts that I can have about this situation or person or circumstance to bring it back to a feeling of gratitude. Okay. I, I have a question. I have a, just a small question. Eh? We have to think, we, there is a lot of I, I, I in this conversation. You have to ask yourself, who is the I? So who is that I? Who, who is that I? Because I also I also something say like I I am the storyteller I'm the dreamer I'm but no, it, you, have, it, you, it, have to, you have to you have to take care of that I because that I can what can I say that I can that can that I can also be the 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 the, the ego so the ego in my case the ego can be willing to drive that brand new Porsche. You see, it? the ego, the ego will go uh, against everybody just to realize that thing. So <laughs> the, the I, I'm thinking these thoughts, I'm feeling these emotions. So uh, sometimes you can you can attach to the I. You know, either it's, it's a father, it's a it's a you, when you attach to the I. Um, you are sometimes you are living in the past, and sometimes sometimes it is or or living in the future. So I can attach 
I can say like, okay, I want to drive that car and that is my want. I really want that car. If I don't get that car, then I'm becoming miserable, you see? And when, what I learned from, from you also and from other people is that I, th there is a different thing of saying, I desire that car. You see, it, it's, it's easier. It's, it's not like if I don't have that car, I'm going to die. I'm going to become miserable. So for instance, the, so in, in summary, the willpower is also who is enforcing that willpower? Who is the I? Who is, who is uh, the one feeling all those emotions? Because sometimes when I feel bad, I just go and I just look at myself from the outside. I'm saying, look at you. <laughs> you should be grateful. The I with all those problems. I mean, you live on Curacao, you live in the, in the Caribbean. Look at you, you have all those emotions, all those problems, and look at you. You see, so, so I just play with myself. You see, I, I play like, I play the game with myself, like don't attach to all those negative feelings, don't attach to that. And, yeah. I, and I'm, I, when, when, those, when those feelings come, keep coming back, 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 then you can also say, okay, you have to deal with them. And what you can do is you can put a playground. You say, you say, okay, these feelings, I'm going to take some, some uh, attention to these feelings. I'm going to let the character Rini Calmera, I'm going to let the character play with those feelings of, that keep coming all the time, you see? So I'm not going to attach, I'm just going to know what happened. What, I'm going to play that. So I'm, at, at that person, I'm, I, I del deliberate, deliberately, so with willpower, I just say, there is a character, Rooney Calmera, and he has these feelings coming all over again, again, again. Now we are going to play a game. We are going to let these feelings come in and we are going to see it. You see, you see so it is not Rooney Calmera with, with, the, with the feelings playing and then that I become an ego. It's just deliberately, I'm going to let that feeling come in what is going to happen? And I'm, go I'm, I'm going to be still. So Rooney is going to play with those feelings and then I'm going to be still and see what happens. So that's an ego game I play. I just let the feeling come in and I let the feeling tell what is happening. But now I'm not attaching, I'm not becoming sad. I'm not going to become attached to that feeling. If the feeling needs, to, needs attention coming up, I'm just going, so I, who is the I? That's basically, who's the I feeling all those emotions? Who's the I feeling sad today? That's it, are you guys still there? Yeah, no, Rooney, really, that, that is quite a, uh, a deep content, buddy. The, the thing with the ego, right, is, is is a very individual process in and it's actually very very different with every person um that the how you will deal this what you're referring to the i you this is this is why i uh, i refer to the emotional content okay to the way you feel all right rather than grasping it which is unquestioning it which is what you're saying okay what you're doing is that you're analyzing it now if you begin to analyze something again it's like a thought you're giving it substance if you give a negative feeling substance you're maintaining it and you don't want to do that so the minute you feel that negativity like nicole said you find ways of changing it and wait one of the, personally one of the easiest things is that i found something that makes me happy almost automatically as soon as i think of it now for me it was my dad he passed away last year but it's my dad and the love that i that he and i had is i mean he was my stepdad we went through a lot together and we understood each other 
all the way to the end. Um, and for me, thinking about my dad is a switch. It goes from dark to light, like that, automatically. If you can find that within your life, it could be a child. I don't have children, so I can't say. It could be a child. It could be a cat. It could be a dog. It could be a pet that you used to have or you had a great attachment to. It could be anything. Now, to a lot of people, something like that can bring tears. To me, it brings me happiness because I remember the best of times because that's what I choose to do. That's where I put my willpower at its greatest um, endurance. Now, by doing that, however, I'm maintaining that every time something happens. I've altered it. So when I think about my dad, it's the greatest happiness that I could have. By developing it, you, you develop it with, with a persistence of a willpower because it's what you want to do. The thing with the ego, you know when something is wrong. We all do. Everybody does. The only people that don't is when you've been in an environment of negativity, the majority of your life, you get used to it. The only way to alter it is to get out of it. The majority of us, we understand what's right, what's wrong. We know how, what a good feeling is, what a bad feeling is. We know when something's going good, when something's going wrong within us. The thing with the ego is that it does exactly that. It's, it's all an emotion, it's all to do with emotions. And once you maintain your emotion, you start feeling it, you know which way you're going. And when it's going the wrong way, you'll know it. And this is where you apply what Nicole said. If you haven't got that switch, you start putting the thoughts in, you start finding something that is going to make you feel good. And it, you will find it. That's without a doubt. You always do. There's always something that you can change it. Because you've got to remember, everything's got two sides to it. Everything has a two, two sides. This is the rule of opposites, the law of opposites. Whatever goes up must come down and so on and so on. So when we're talking about the ego, the ego is something which is, um, I don't really want to use the word complex, but it, it is, it, it is a, com a complex idea in the sense that you've got to recognize yourself. And it's what Bill Gove said, um, or Proctor says it, which is, um, I can't remember the exact words, but it's basically, you've got to know yourself. Before you can, you can be yourself, you've got to know yourself. And once you know yourself, then you can move forward. But it's getting there. And getting there, you, you've got to persist. You, you've got to want to do it. And you wouldn't be here. There's eight of us on here. None of us would be here if we didn't want to. If we didn't want to do this, and this is willpower. This is what's brought you on here tonight. This is what brought me on here tonight. It's it's only time I can do it, but it's what's brought me on here tonight. And this is willpower. This is persistence. It's because you want to do something. You want to change something, and it's your willpower that keeps bringing you back. It's willpower that made me call do this. It wasn't just something that she said, oh, oh, you know, it'd be nice to do or whatever. She said, I'm going to do it. And it's her willpower that created this group. Now, in the same way, everything else is will. It's the willpower. It's the willpower to maintain something, that positive thoughts in any way that you can. I found that that way for me is emotion. For someone else, it could be just pure thought. If you, it depends on, on your mental orientation. 
And that's what I found. My mental orientation initially was scientific based, therefore I changed thought for thought. And I found that that wasn't working for me. So I tried the emotional side and it worked. But it does work. I'm not gonna say it works all of the time, but it does work. So by maintaining that em the emotional content, you're finding yourself in a better state. And by putting yourself in a better state, by the maintaining of that willpower, you will find that becomes easier and easier and easier and easier. Effort is a key to willpower. Willpower comes as a result of effort. You've got to know yourself, you find yourself through willpower. It's not easy. Nobody said this stuff is easy. It requires effort. However, you don't say to yourself, this is hard because that's what I was doing, and it was hard. So I said to myself, this is easy. <laughs> and with the power, it became easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting earlier today in my other business, so I, I could possibly have people arriving any moment. So if they do, I'll just put you on mute and let you guys <laughs> continue. <laughs> well done. Great talk. And I think we've answered question number four. Um, you know, what should be our attitude toward poverty? Well, don't think about poverty. Mm -hmm. Correct. I agree. I'll, I'll throw this in. Nicole, I can't remember who said this, but you might remember. Or one of you guys might remember. It's to do with Mother Teresa. She was asked, would you attend an anti-war party? She said, no. But if you have, ever have a peace part, a peace march, I will attend it. Yeah. yeah. Now that, to me, is the epitome of all of this. I mean, everything. And it's, a, it's, yeah, it's exactly what you said. It's that maintenance, isn't it? Yeah, and it does get easier after time because you're training yourself training yourself you're training your thoughts you're training yourself to be in a certain vibration of emotion which then becomes a habitual vibration for yourself rather than the previous vibration that you had last week or the week before or six months ago yeah correct i like that <laughs> i had a exercise that was presented to me uh, not too long ago about taking and observe all of your thoughts you know, every time, you, you know, for every situation, that would be, it's an interesting exercise just to start to observe being in the thoughts, being the thoughts. You know, every thought that we think and we express or taking in our conversations and what is that thought? You know, where that thought, you know, what is it about that thought? You know, just recognizing that it is what it is, is simply a thought that's being created through the substance of our of processing or the thought going on in our minds, what have you. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Another interesting thing about thoughts being vibrations is that the vibration that you're in at the time de determines the types of thoughts that are coming into your experience and passing through. So, if you not if you're getting a constant supply of thoughts that aren't very conductive to what you want to be doing you might need to raise your vibration up to start attracting another train of thoughts because they're just vibration and you know we all know when you hold a thought more thoughts of a similar kind are attracted to it because you're vibrating in a resonance with that thought if you want to change your thoughts you might need to think about like christos was saying your emotions change your vibration and you'll change the train of thoughts that are coming to you I was reading about that. Uh, one of the persons on the call um, earlier, I believe it was Gloria, you were asking about how do you begin your day thinking in a positive way? Or if you were asking about building habits, the way our brains work, if you could imagine walking down a sidewalk or a pathway that's made of brick cobblestones and you come to a long section that has no cobblestones, it's just dirt. Each time you jump over that and reach the other side, imagine that you're setting down a brick. And every time, as you do that over time, you set down another brick. So you shorten the distance of which there's no cobblestones each time you jump across it. 
that's the way our thoughts work in our brain. It's called the synaptic cleft. It's the distance yeah. and it's a chemical bond. Each time you follow through with that thought, each time you do a specific thing, you build it closer and closer. Over time, you'd fill in all the holes so that the pathway was continuous. At that point, the neurons would be said to be wired together. There is no gap, basically. And then it becomes very difficult to break that habit. And that's the process of forming habits is using our will to force that intentionally until it does become habit. A lot of old habits are very difficult to break for that very reason. So we have to replace them consciously with substantial effort over a prolonged period of time. Yeah, yes, the habits great. are really actually very awesome tools that we can use to create within ourselves for positive reasons. If we can get rid of the old uh, non-positive habits through lack of use, the pathway will get overgrown with weeds again and purposefully instill habits that are going to help us to move forward. That's what an awesome tool we've got with habits. I think... Yeah, I think I think, I think I think I think yeah. habits ha habits are t taught on thoughts on our autopilot. Yes. So, yeah. so if yeah, you and it takes for thirty days, doesn't it? Doesn't it usually? Um, I have something to say. There was a discussion about poverty and so on. And I was in West Africa, Niger, and and uh, Kosovo for for a year, living in a hotel, and. Um, we're not supposed to focus on, and, and this goes into your mind because they say 30 days you pick up a new insight, a new new pattern. Because what Bob was saying today, I was reading another chapter. Repetition. If you want money, the one that you guys put on with my repetition, keep studying it. It's how you think. But when you go to a place like that, and you're you're immersed in the orphanages and all the things that you see around you. Um, that's pretty challenging to really just shake that off. And, you know, we're, we're all, we are compassionate, loving human beings, and there's another side to this. So that's just a challenge, but I really realize that to get up and thanks for sharing about the sidewalk, because now when I go out, I will, I will see how many uh, dirt pathways between the cobblestones, uh, because Europe, there's lots of them here. But I also think that, um, the repetition of saying something that's focusing, and what I do is pick up this book or I watch a video on the Stranger Secret or something to try and get my head out of this, because I actually had to have uh, a lot of psycho uh, psychological help because I had reverse culture shock. So these things about your emotions and about habitual patterns can take the forefront if we're not careful. And that's why when I shift and I look up to the sky and I think, oh, look at those clouds, they're like thoughts. So this is the process that I am, uh, I am immersing myself in now. But thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Thank Hello? you. Relative to the chapter, this is Tim again. There was one question I, I think would be good to have in the question sections, and it was about competition versus yeah, creation. creation, yeah. What do all of you think about that? Are, are they compatible? No. No. No, never. Never. I'll tell you why. I had this conversation with a with a guy um, that I'm work well, I was working with when he came to MLM. He, uh, he came across and he says, without the competitive strain, you cannot get creative. I said to him, you're wrong. And he turns to my partner, and I didn't even need to listen to what she was about to say. I knew what she was about to say because he tried to be smart. Because he says to her, Look, if you weren't competitive in the stuff you're doing, in the decoupage, everything she's, she's doing, you wouldn't get creative. And she just looks and says to him, No, I'm not competitive. I just get creative. And he just looked at her and says, Hey, now, the idea of the competitive spirit, and Napoleon Hill says this, there's very few people that have ever come on top through the competitive strain, such as Henry Ford, um, Thomas Edison, 
they, this one, no, not Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, yes, Andrew Carnegie. He says, those people got to where they got through their competitive strain, but they're few and far in between. Now bear in mind, Andrew Carnegie is the one that told Napoleon Hill to do this, to start thinking grow rich. And in it, Napoleon Hill clearly states, you have to leave the competitive mind and enter the creative mind to be able to move ahead. There's a reason for it. When you go into the competitive strain and the competitive mind, what you're doing is that you are trying to compete with something that already exists. In other words, you look at a coffee shop, loads of coffee shops all over the place, and they're all trying to do exactly the same thing, sell coffee. Now, I don't know about you guys, I mean, I'm in Limassol in Cyprus and I can walk down the street and we've got Gloria jeans, you've got uh, La Croissant Terry, you've got Starbucks, you've got the local ones and, and you, you can literally come across about six, seven coffee shops in one road. Now, I don't know how many different types of coffees there are, but I know there are plenty. The thing is, is that each one of them does something different. Now, if you're in the competitive mode, what you would do is you would copy the other person and try to do exactly what that person does. And Bob Proctor put this very nicely. He said, there was a time when he was giving a speech, he was giving a talk, and comp other companies decided that what they would do is listen to what he says and then give the script to actors, but it didn't work. It didn't work because they weren't putting any emotion into this. They were just reading the words, so it, it wasn't working. He, they weren't emitting that thing that Bob Proctor would emit, and it didn't work because they were trying to do, to do it on a competitive, uh, on the competitive level. The thing with the competitive level is that it cuts out a lot of your own personal creativity. The minute you do that, you no longer are able to push out who you are, what you are. And we're not talking about the ego, we're talking about the, what, what, who you truly are. And when you love doing something, the ego disappears automatically. Okay, that, that's how you know that you're moving ahead. You no longer feel like you've got to compete with someone else, you, you're not thinking, oh, good grief, you know, what have I got to do to make more money than that guy? What, what do I have to do to get over him? You're thinking, right, I've got this, how can I make this better for my customers, for the people that come in? How can I make this better for the people out there? And that's the difference between the competitive and the creative. The creative, shows you a way to be better and you feel good when you're doing it. The competitive gives you stress and it can create no. yeah, it can create something creative but it, it doesn't. In reality what it's doing is just giving you another form of what you're already doing. But, and this is why very very few people have actually ever got out on top on the competitive side because the creative side doesn't always work it doesn't always benefit for it to benefit you have to go into the creative Tim it's this is one of those things I'll be honest after I had that conversation with that guy it's something that I, I sat down and I thought about a lot I even my partner and I sat down and we must have talked about about it for hours and hours and hours because I thought to myself, you know, he, he may have a point because when you get competitive, you do get creative. And this is where my partner just announced, she said, yeah, but when you get competitive, you're getting locked in a battle of will. And, you know, you've got to, you're getting in the point where, you know, is my knowledge better than his? And can I do more than him or her? Um, can I get more stuff? If I have more stuff, it'll look bigger and it'll get more attractive. But the answer is, well, not necessarily. 
just because you've got 250 cups compared to their 100, it doesn't make you the shop look more attractive. It just means you've got more stuff inside. When I see you get creative, you'll think, how can I make this look better? And you might hang the cups off the ceiling with some uh, fishing line. So it looks like they're floating in the middle of nowhere. Whereas the other person has got them on a shelf. Uh, you haven't thought about that. You're thinking, how can I make this look different? Uh, uh, for me, to me, it's, it's a, a really, really big difference. Yes, the competitive can work for some, but it doesn't work for all. The creative works for everybody. And once you get into the creative mind, you constantly creating, constantly, constantly, constantly. I see it in my partner, he's constantly creating. She was the first one to do this in the town. All of a sudden, different people started doing it, but nobody does what she does. You can make it, you can do exactly the same thing in exactly the same way, but the results you get are different because you're going from the competitive to the creative. If you're going into the competitive, all you're trying to do is copy what someone else has done and try and better them. Once you go into the creative, you're doing your own thing, you're putting your heart into it, and nobody can equal you, ever. You will never be equal when you bring your heart into whatever you're doing. If you put your love, your soul into something, you can't, you will never be equal, buddy. But that's my personal opinion. Anyone else? And I wonder if, um, you know, Andrew Carnegie, when I listen to the Spanish speaking app, they're not competing with anybody. They're creating, they're using their thinking substance, which is which is creation. It's what it's the thinking substance that was put in us from birth, from God, from the universe. So they when they were working on it, they were just learning to think the way God would want them to think. But I don't think they were trying to compete to say, well, I, you know, uh, you were born rich or think you grow rich um, because God is an abundant God who is rich. But we, everywhere we go, we can pick up fruits, vegetables. I mean, so we think of the abundance. So it really has nothing with people that maybe we think that are competing. They're competing with the, the, the probably the sorrow and the struggles inside because they're feeling fearful and anxious because they're not feeling like they're going to make it. So they force things like forcing the sun to shine or the sun or whatever. And that's the competitive spirit, but the creative spirit, like Bob Proctor, they're not they're not forcing it. They're just trying to tell you that that's how God thinks, that's how the universe thinks. So it's the thinking substance. But that's creative, that's not competitive. Yeah. So that's just how how I see it. It's, and competitive, competitive is only when, you know, you look at football teams and of course they want to win, but they're using a thinking substance, they're using a strategy. So they're not looking at what the other people are doing, they're only going to try and be the best that they can be. That, that's just my interpretation. That's, that's an absolutely brilliant analogy. Uh, that's fantastic. Tim, where are you from, buddy? Pardon? Are you asking me? Uh, no, oh, Tim. Tim. Yes, this yeah. is Tim Christos. Uh, I live uh, in northern Illinois, a okay. small university town about an hour from Chicago. Okay, so are you a baseball guy or are you a football guy? Uh, neither, really. Um, just not big. You mean proper football or American football? <laughs> either. Either either because I, I don't do I don't do sports at all, buddy. Yeah, so, no. The the competition question. I uh, in my own mind, I, I'm thinking about it. You know, you can't. Uh, if all life is growth, I I've come to believe that I cannot stifle anyone else's growth without restricting my own. I cannot grow, and and consciously try to prevent other people from growing. So. That would argue against any competition. The other thing about competition, in the sense of the the 
formless substance and energy is I cannot be competitive without attracting competition towards me. So in the end, it works against me as well. But also just a frame of mind of abundance, growth, serving others, they don't equate at all. That it's much more beneficial, the energy of the universe or this formless substance, as Waddles calls it, uh, it's much better to think in terms of creation or creative or co-creation. So Michael Bernard Beckwith uh, has an excellent book called Life Visioning. And in there, there's a, a, a couple of places. There's lines that say, with willingness, there's always a way. With willfulness, there's often a wall. And I found that very beneficial. What's that book again? The gentleman's name is Michael Bernard Beckwith. Yeah. Uh, his spiritual center is Agape, A-G-A-P, on the yeah. West Coast. The title of the book is Life Visioning. Life Visioning. He's one of the guys I listen to, Tim. I haven't come across that book. Okay. Um, you know, like, it's, it's quite odd. I'm, I mentioned Holywell and Bob Coxon mentions him every now and then and it's a book called Working with the Law and one of the, uh, the third chapter is actually called The Law of Supply and what he's done is that he's numbered the paragraphs and there's a paragraph that's after 160 he says as we're able to think and to realize more abundance out of what we already have we should not only expand our thinking, but receive more abundantly. But that's a lot of supply. But previous to that, what he says is, instead of tightening up in our thinking, we must relax and be more expanding. We must educate our minds to a larger state of thinking. When we can think and realize more abundance, we shall receive more abundantly. And what struck me was the, the thing about, we must educate our minds to a larger state of thinking. And I think that's what he relates to because he doesn't talk about the creative and the competitive a lot. Um, but he's talking about the higher state of thinking is, is the creative state of mind. Because the minute he, it's like you said, it's like you, uh, sorry, who's the lady that was speaking? I don't know your name, I do apologize. Gloria? Gloria, hello. I can't see your name, yes. Hannah. Um, oh no! I don't think I registered properly. I see everybody else's name, but I, that's I right. don't know how to do that. But yeah, it's Gloria from I'm in Germany right now, Munich. Oh, good. Ich war in Deutschland vor zehn Jahren. Yeah. The thing with the thing with it's that analogy you made, which is you know when you look at uh, baseball, football, any kind of football or any kind of sport. When they try to copy what the other team did and try to beat them, they, they never win, yeah. ever. No. So what they've got to do, yeah, yeah they've got to get creative. They've got to get creative in their plans, in their offensive, their defensive, how they're going to do this, how they're going to do that. You know, in, I remember my best friend used to play cricket. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? We're still here, Gloria. Maybe uh, Christos lost his connection. Yeah, yeah okay. it's me. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. My best mate used to play cricket. I don't understand the game. But he explained it to me to a, to a degree in the sense of strategy. And he says, at the end of the day, if I want to hit the ball, for a four or a six. But don't ask me, I don't get it. I said to him, I'm still not following you. He says, just listen. I said, fine. He says, if I want to hit the ball for a four or a six, I know how I'm going to hit it on the bat. But if I do what I did previously, then they're going to know what, I, what I'm going to do. So what I've got to do is change it whilst I'm in the game. In other words, he had to enter a creative state of mind whilst he was in the game. So. The, this thing about the creative state 
is it's not just in one thing. It's not just in what we're trying to do with ourselves. It's not anything basic. It, it goes into all parts of life, in everything. And that's the best part about it. It's that once you stop going into the competitive strain, the creative begins to form. And you begin to find yourself, you're able to do a lot more than you could ever do before. Um, I don't know if you guys have watched The Shift, the film, uh, Wayne Dyer, you'll find it on YouTube, Tim, I think you you love that, that film. It, yes, I, I've seen bits and pieces of yeah. it, I, I have a couple of books by Wayne Dyer. Yeah, Cheryl. Are you talking about The Shift, the, the yeah, movie I The Shift? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw that movie, it was very good. Okay, you remember the bit about the director? Because he says to the director, and the director says, you know, I want this, I want that, you know, how can I do that without being competitive? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I go for abundance, I go for a better life, you know, this and that, and I've been attracting all my life, Wayne Dyer says. And what yeah. he says to me is, if you let go of the competitive, you may find that in the creative, you're able to do what you want and more. Yeah. Now, if, Tim, watch the film, buddy. It's absolutely, it's, I, it's one of those films which is like my go-to film in the mornings when I don't want to do anything else but get a, a, a little bit of, you know, that oomph, that kind of thing. <laughs> I go and watch the shift and I'll be honest, I don't, I don't watch all of it. I just flick to the bits where he's talking. <laughs> but it, I find it, it's one of those things that, it explains really, really nicely and clearly what the creative and the competitive is. And yeah. can you go into competitive? Of course you can. Is it going to help you? No. No. That's a lot. Because they're forcing. If they're forcing the sun to rise. You cannot do it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's all about the will. Because you look at you look at hockey teams and all the coaches trying to compete with but they're only focusing on that they're going to be the best look at these gold medal winners they're not they're not looking at what the other person's doing they just know what their strategy is and they're focused they're thinking in a certain way that's what's so powerful yeah yeah they are thinking in a certain way Sean. yeah that's a really good analogy i like that <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, if they took their eyes, if they were focusing on someone else, they would be taking their eyes off themselves and they would lose their own focus and their purpose. I really like that. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah, I think it's a very uh, interesting analogy. Yeah. Because the people that the people that compete, they're only looking at somebody else, and they're they're, they're wanting to go up one upmanship. You know, that's why they intimidate and try to belittle people because they just try to make themselves feel better. But creation is they're in their own little world, like a plant. When a flower comes up, it's not competing with the next one to see who's beautiful or shape better. It just is. It's just farming the way it's supposed to. And, and I really love that analogy. Yeah. Right, guys. Um, I'm gonna have to excuse to myself. I've got a. It's one o'clock in the morning over here, and I'll go work in the morning. I uh, I really need it, guys. Yeah. And it's really good to have heard you guys talk. It's raised my spirit. Yeah. Where are you at? Cyprus. Where? Oh, you're in Cyprus. Oh my oh, God. Okay. It's supposed it's to be cold. brilliant weather. <laughs> no, weather's got nothing to okay. do with it. Guys, no. thank you very, very much. You uh, are okay. very lovely thank chat. You yeah, thank, thank you everyone for being on the phone call. Thank I you. liked what you had. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Nicole. Again, Rooney, everybody that's sharing, uh, Cheryl, whoever's there. Uh, God bless you guys and thanks so much for this year amazing deal and uh encouragement yeah reach out and connect on facebook yeah for sure okay 
All the best. Guys later. Night. Take care, Bye. Callie. Thank you, Christoph. Get some rest. I'm going to try me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Good night.